The camera caught uh, President Biden, who turned 79 later this month, uh, with his eyes closed for a period of time. These can be embarrassing situations. You have the contrast of leaders, including President Biden, calling for the urgency of these issues of addressing climate. And uh, a moment like that in a session uh, can be uh, a political uh, obstacle. NBC rushing to defend President Biden after he seems to start taking a nap during opening remarks at the U.N. climate conference in Scotland. Yeah, fatigue setting in after the president called climate change the greatest threat to U.S. security. Joe Concha, Fox News contributor, joins us now. And Joe, you just have to wonder what the media's reaction would have been if former President Trump fell asleep uh, on the international hey, hey, car, stage. Car, car, car. He's, he's sleeping. Oh, he's sleeping. yes. Don't, don't wake okay. him up. Got it. Joe! Hi. Did you? <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Stayed up watching Todd's Giants uh, lose again last night. Funny you know. guy. I need my 12 hours of sleep. Funny guy. Thank you. Uh, the fun never stops. They played well. They played well. The fun never stops uh, when playing this game, right, Carly? Uh, when, when you replace uh, Mr. Biden here and insert, as you said, Donald Trump or anyone with an R next to their name, then imagine what the media reaction would look like. Uh, the headline would be something like, Trump insults the world, falls asleep during crucial climate conference. Then you'd have a subheadline like something along the lines of, I don't know, a chilling reminder of a president asleep at the wheel on the gravest threat of our lifetime. Now, Back to reality, this was an actual headline from Trump's presidency from the Washington Post editorial board. I, I asked your uh, crack producers uh, to, to draw it up as uh, what we call an FS headline. Excellent and it, it's amazing. Oh, yes, they're, 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 they're tremendous. And, and the editorial board basically says uh, in this situation, there it is, if Trump cares about Hurricane Florence, his policies don't show it. Another one said that he was actually complicit in hurricanes hitting the U.S. So uh, that, that's, that's what we uh, had uh, when Trump was actually uh, president. But, but back to the current president and Biden. What we don't see from him is if we're talking energy and work ethic, effort is ethic is effort, right? And and we have a crisis at the border, but the president can't be bothered to visit the border and do what active presidents do when there's a crisis on his watch. See it firsthand, talk to people on the ground, get the necessary resources to the area. Uh, we have a supply chain crisis, right? But the president can't visit a port city in Long Beach or Los Angeles or Savannah or Newark, nor can his transportation secretary, Pete Buttigieg, who was too busy talking about paternity leave and universal pre-care uh, or pre-K to, to, to focus on fixing that catastrophe that's impacting so many Americans. And a recent CBS poll, and I'll leave this here, finds that a majority of Americans believe that this administration is not competent, focused, or effective enough to run the government. And it's painfully apparent, Todd, Carly. Meantime, Joe, the anti-Biden rallying cry is causing mainstream media to melt down as the left scrambles to control the narrative. That's a nice and clean way of getting into this. Uh, take a listen to the mainstream media losing their you-know-what. The mainstreaming of a chant that is actually about F the president of the United States is not patriotic. It's trollish. There's absolute free speech. Folks can do what they want. When members of Congress are bringing that kind of language, you can't then repair and talk about the need for civility and respecting a president when he's from your party. And this is about the let's go, Brandon. Uh, you, oh, you, oh, I can't believe you said it. I wasn't going to go there. Uh, look, Joe, there are also calls for a Southwest pilot's head for invoking Brandon on a, a flight over the loudspeaker. Why is this a sin when conservatives do it, but when liberals like, oh, I don't know, Robert De Niro say it at an award show, it's just fine. Uh, whether it's De Niro, whether it's Madonna, uh, five minutes after Trump was elected saying that she wanted to blow up the White House, whether it's Kathy Griffin holding up a severed head of the likeness of Donald Trump and then actually going on tour uh, not too long after that uh, to talk about the severed head and how she was the victim somehow. I, I could go through the, the list of, of people, particularly on the network you just showed in CNN, where uh, one primetime anchor actually said, if you voted for Donald Trump, you're a racist, all 74 million people. Uh, so you could go on and on uh, about this. But you had a CNN analyst. You talked about that Southwest Airlines pilot who may have been saying, let's go Braves. It's, it really is hard to tell the difference between Braves and Brandon when you listen to the audio. Uh, but one CNN analyst comparing it uh, to saying on a loudspeaker, if you're a pilot, long live ISIS, uh, which is probably not a, a good choice of words when you consider uh, that, that what terrorists have done with, with planes uh, in the last 20 years. Or another CNN analyst saying the pilot may suffer from substance abuse, right. anger issues for making making a joke. That's where we are now at this point. Uh, one side makes a joke, and that is a threat to civility. The other side goes far, far worse, and uh, it's A-OK -okay because of who the target was, Carly Todd. Mm -hmm.
All right, Joe Kutcha, thank you so much let's for joining us Joe. this morning. Let's go, Joe. I'm not going to that well, way. Carly. I mean, let's go, well done. Joe. We got to go. <laughs> thank you. Oh, he thank was falling you. asleep in the beginning it. and clapping yeah, okay. at the ending. That's a, that's, our that's a win. Thanks, Joe. Boom. All right, America. <laughs>